Right then, so this video is how to take a screen off one of these lovely little bad boys. So it has a smash in there, one's dropped it, and the screen is absolutely knackered. Um, can't tell though because it looks great, but when you turn it on, there's lines everywhere. So I don't know how this video is going to turn out, so we're going to just go with it as we go along. Tools of my trade um, are. Air dryer on that number setting there. These little bad boys, guitar picks. Now, I always start off on something like a, a low number, like a point fifty eight, I think that says. Yeah, and then I hair dry it across. Uh, what I'll try and do is speed this video up if I get a chance. We'll see how we go along, or at least start you off, and then you can do the rest yourself. But this is how I always start. So heat first. Pick one area first, because that's got a little bit there that's going to make life easier for us. But just to show you what area I heat up, I tend to go here first. So the area I tend to go for is either here first or here first, and I'll explain as we go along why. Alright, that's nice and warm, and you get your pick, and you slide it in to where the speaker side is. Yeah? And then gently as you can, just peel it along. You see how it just started to go into the glass there. Yeah. Now this actually feels like it's on really strong. So this is my first Surface Book 2 that I've opened. Most of them have been Surface Book 1s. So this may end up being a complete shit show. Um, let's find out as we go along. It actually doesn't feel like I've heated it up enough as well, so I'm going to do it a bit longer. Let's try this again. See, when it's nice and warm, right, it should just slide down really quickly. Like this. That bit done. And then keep going along. Now, I'm sure I've shown you videos with these things open, but there's not actually a lot of tape on this bottom bit at all. This becomes quite an easy part to open as well. And because the screen's already had it, right, I'm not actually trying to save the screen. I'm just trying to take it off without having been shattered everywhere. So, house rules. If you have not done one of these before, uh, or you need to save the screen here and here. So this is a Surface Book facing you or however way you do it, as long as you know your camera's here, or your camera's here, here and here are connectors. Use your pick sparingly. Um, I tend to go in about just that much of the pick and just go past those parts and then come back past it again so I'm not forcing that area. And if you just take it gently, as long as you know where your thumb is, you stop where your thumb is on the glass, you won't shear into the cables then. Now, and if you notice, I haven't actually heated up around here again, have I? But we've, we're actually through. So at, the, at this stage, I can lift this up like this. See? And then you can see the connectors yourself. Just there, connect to one, and there, 
connector two just folded in. Okay. Now, so the, the the bottom bit is nice and easy. Okay, getting the surface bits off. Never try the top because the top's got just way too much glue on it. Uh, and when you go inside, you'll see why. There's a bar across the top which has got the antennas on it. Right, so now this is where it's always hit miss. But just make sure for yourself and for your own benefit, you've done as much as you can manually before you start the heating process again. So I always just put my picking at an angle and just cut away anything to make sure that it's open across the top and the bottom. Ooh. And the surface book too looks like it's a little bit different on the inside, but we will come back to that in a second. So, up to five minutes now, uh, but I've read stories of people being on these for a lot longer. So I'm just going to heat the top now. Um, a hairdryer because I have seen videos where people have absolutely distorted their colour and it's all gone a bit weird uh, with the hairdryer unless the screen's smashed I've had 100% success on screens working afterwards uh, on the surface books on the surface pros I had ghosting afterwards with the screens when I've got them off but to be fair if you get a surface pro screen off with just a few basic tools I think you're already doing really well for yourself now on the books the antennas are here. When you go in with your pick, you've got to be careful not to try and go under the plastic seat or the antenna bar that's on here because you'll take the antenna stickers off. You really want to be trying to push against the glass. So you're trying to take the sticky stuff off the glass as opposed to off the base that it's held on. It's not a precise science and to be honest it's hit miss but if you feel like you're fighting against something perhaps just take a stop and go to another area it does get really sticky around here and with this bit missing it is really quite tricky as well so I'm going to probably focus a bit more attention on this side and then heat up that other part and take that a bit more gentler so back to heat and so notice here's just a normal off the shelf hair dryer I do have a proper heat gun I'll be damned if I use it for this I mean, if I could afford it, I'd buy the proper equipment and just sit it on there to heat up and take it off in one piece. And I'd also try and do the digitizer repairs as well. But these are the tools I have to work with. All right, so we're nicely in there now. So we're going to try again, just gently going across, taking up what we can, applying a bit more heat each time, with the view of just trying to get into. Now it's closer to the base. You may find you'll wear out a pick over time. So just make sure you've got plenty. I have also found that across the top, once you get past the first part, you can move up the picks and use a slightly bigger one. But I wouldn't recommend doing that. Oh, there you go, there's a pick that's gone. But I'd rather the pick than the screen. Um, back to another one that I've got. This one's cold, so we might find it's, it's a bit more stronger. Cuts through a little bit better. Yeah. Right, so that is actually clear over the most important part, which is just there. So now we'll just go over this bit, which has very little tape on it, and then spend the last few minutes of this video concentrating on that part. Um, I said I wish I had one that actually worked so I could have done this properly. Um, this video has been on my to-do list for a while, but I've never got around to doing it. So I just thought I'd have a go with the Surface Book camera. So if the light's not as good, I apologise now. Uh, but you know, hopefully you get the gist of what I'm doing. Right, so I promise you that bit's up. You might have a little bit stuck on it, but that's it. So then a little bit more each time. Apply a bit more heat. Thing is, right, 
you've just got to be patient with the heat as well. It's so easy to think, oh, forget it, I can't be asked. But then when you crack one, yeah, you soon realise that's £100 down the tube, or £200 down the tube, or whatever it costs for you to source your own. Equally, round here, you can see that that's broken. But if, it, if I didn't know that was broken, I have seen boards come in where someone's gone in like that angle. Yeah? And round here, you'll break the buttons off the board. And I can't solder to save my life, so that's me having to put a board in the bin or list it on eBay as fold to. That's a crying shame if it's just you got this far and then knocked the buttons out. So I'm having to be really careful around this part because I don't really want to break it. But let's see if we can take any of this up and then try and tackle that a slightly different way. Right, so this should be clear. Let's just massage it along a little bit. And that should come up like that. Again, same principle, just slowly cut it away. Placing it at an angle, just take off as much as you can. The angle is kind of like going from the corner like that, pushing down, and you're actually aiming to be along, just running along the board, not scratching it, but just running along it to take it up. So, 80% so quick time check, 11 minutes. Thanks for those that are still with me and watching. If you fast forwarded, thanks as well. Uh, I probably would have fast forwarded as well. And most of this is off. So it's just this one corner where it's been dropped that I'm just being a bit more careful. Now the great thing is, is there are no antennas here. So I may just go nuts. I'm going to put this like this. Then I'm going to heat up and hopefully slide it off it. lovely noise I don't know if you could hear it or not but it was like a, a releasing noise which is like thank you Lord <laughs> all right now in these times with us all having potential for a coronavirus um, you might have a project like this you want to start at home you know hopefully this video will give you the courage to just get that surface screen changed um, as I said this is the book for the surface pro the, the procedure is the same but I and no one else out there is going to give you any guarantees that it's going to work. They are very, very fiddly. Right, so in here, now that you can see the insides, you'll notice that connection here and connection here. This one is going to the touch digitizer. This is going to power the screen. Okay, this one's the title of the two. This connector here stays complete to the screen. So what you need to do really is instead of coming up this way, you have to come up this, this way. So with a little bit of gentle force, you come up like this and you end up inside your surface. Now notice here, I mentioned about being a bit too close to the digitized, to the, to the um, antennas. I've actually sheared that cable, that sticker off but I haven't broke it, so what I can do is gently put that back. That's there. Put that back in, pop a bit of glue on it, and then that antenna will be fine. However, if you take it off a bit further up, you'll disconnect it from the board, and then that's a complete loss. All right, to take the screen off though, so you can actually work on it, you have to take this metal screen off here, this screen off here, and this housing off here. Now, I might have to pause this video and go and get a tool for this because I'm a funny angle and then show you how you do that with the tools I use um, you use whatever tools you feel comfortable with so I'm just going to pause it and then resume with my wonderful friend here now I will always say this and agree with anyone that says this as well metal tools metal surface don't however these little things plastic just doesn't seem to cut it for me um, so I'm going to just try and get to a good position where I can do this. Showing you is actually the hardest part of this. So I tend to just get the, the clippy part of that part and push it up here to just take it up the connector like that. In many cases it then goes flying off. So I just make sure you can see that without ripping the cables. I then take this. This is where you could use plastic if you really wanted to or your fingernail and take him up. 
that gives you just a bit of breathing space because that's the tighter of the two cables okay the next one which is over here is slightly more different um because it's a triangle shield so i tend to try and prise it up never ever go in like this and try and push it up or go in like that and try and push it up i always try and go from this corner here um, and pretty much try and do exactly the same just clip it up in one go and then it's up and then here you don't actually need to use your tool because there's loads of components around here just your fingertip hope you come and off you go and then you have one screen I would say perfect but sadly it is actually perfect but when the person that took it off uh, well when the person dropped it they knackered the screen at the same time but this screen from a smashed glass point of view is mint um, I normally spray on I don't spray on I heat up and take this glue off um, it does actually come off by hand if you just be careful uh, I'd warn you against spraying anything in there because you, what you can find is the spray ends up in here and it takes a long long time for it to disappear uh, but as you can see just there I was just peeling that off and it's coming up quite easy um, okay so that's how you take a screen off that was what the purpose of the video is um, if you wanted to use this on a different system then you'd just carry on uh, and reverse what we've done in terms of steps uh, I always say plug this one in first plug that one in second test it before you seal it uh, and I'm not the only one that would say that to you it's nothing worse than trying to do it now I've not had one of these surface book twos open before this is an i5 version this is the surface book I'm going to call it the 1.5 even though it is the surface book 2 it's a surface book 2 i5 the 7 series though so it's a dual processor uh, with two hyper thread and two core two hyper threading so you see four processors in there the ones above this the newer i5 is based on the 8 series so you get the full four cores on there um, notice the absence of a fan on the other boards there's a fan there um, so that's going to be quite fun aside from that the doesn't really appear to be that much difference on this than the Surface Book 1 so and there's your connector there's your connector uh, I wish I had a Surface Book 1 open so I could show you a side by side of the two uh, I wouldn't want to say 100% wise you could use this on a on a different board but from what I can see there's not really a lot of difference between the two um, the headphone sockets there that strip there so that looks like that's the same there's a power for the connector as well for the speaker the connector there for the speaker as well and the board from here to here which comes off with about eight or nine different screws looks identical as well seems to be missing the glass on here but we could just have a check okay so somewhere in the removal process I've knocked the glass off from there it's like a round piece of glass that goes in there uh, like a flash uh, I don't know where that's gone though, it must have landed on the floor. I'll keep my eye out for that. Uh, I'm struggling to think what more to say on this. I mean, it, I want to say that it looks identical to the Surface Book 1, but the Surface Book 1 board, for those that have been into it, goes all the way to here, doesn't it? So these power connect. Oh, it does. Sorry. I'm um, jumping the gun a little bit. The, this part here, the antenna bar, that is, is hiding the rest of the motherboard. Um, so what I'll do with this when my replacement one of these arrives, which my friend has already sent to me, is take this board out in its entirety, take this out in its entirety, uh, and then leave the rest for spares. This battery is beautiful. Uh, and sadly, this unit is under warranty, but as those of you that have worked with Microsoft will know, when these get dropped, you don't get nothing back from the warranty. Uh, and even if I did a fudge on it, I'm not getting away with that bend. <laughs> Uh, that's quite a good one there so I mean even on a good day giving that a little pull there we are, at best bring it back to that which to be fair that ain't too bad uh, given what it was when I got it um, for anyone thinking about upgrading your SSDs on these it's exactly the same on all series now you can be a barbarian and just go douche douche rip this thing off put the new drive in 
put it down and hope it works and I've done that before I'll just take the board out pop the new disc in put it all back together again and although it sounds daunting this is actually is quite simple right, so that's as far as I'm going to take this video we're now 20 minutes in if you watched all the 20 minutes thank you very much and um, if I can help you with anything else along the way give us a shout otherwise that's me signing off